man. Guess what came in the mail today? What? Your Montana mule deer tag. Dude, seriously? Definitely not joking. Can I wait? Let's put one in the dirt. Thanks for the news, brother. Psych. Catch you later. So I've been coming up in Montana for the last couple of years hunting mule deer, and there's only one guy that I like to call. is my good friend, Joey. So everyone, this is Joey. And this, also Joey. And believe it or not, that's also Joey. And while Joey may seem real goofy and may not know quite how he wants to grow his facial hair, he's a really good dude, knows a lot about the deer, knows a lot about the land, and I figured if anybody's gonna put Henry on a mule deer, it's gonna be him. So we came up here last year for the 2016 season. Here's a highlight from that year. That highlight reel from the 2016 season that you just saw showed us having a great time, and we did in some regard. But notice, no dead deer. What you're about to see is the reality of what really happened on that trip and what we all had to go through. Check this out. If you're up to bat in the ninth inning and the count's full and you got guys on base and you're the one that's got to get it done. I think I rushed the shot. I just rushed the shot. I should have waited a little longer. Or if time's about to expire and you've only got a couple seconds left in the clock and you're the guy that's got to hit that game-winning three-pointer because you're down by two. Preparation, mindset, emotions, everything comes into play. If things aren't perfectly executed, you're going to go home empty-handed. And that's exactly what happened to us. I feel like a failure. It just sucks. I never would have imagined how much something could haunt you having opportunities like we did, missing. I feel like I'm gonna let Mike and Joey down. Working really hard and coming up with nothing. Just a shitty feeling. There's only one thing left to do. You gotta go back.
morning chill beckons you forward. The fiery glow in the sky illuminates the dirt and grit painted on your face. The risk of pushing closer to the edge pounds with every beat of your heart. It's the call of the hunt. And it's Remington wheels that drive you there. Remington is an American icon. Remington wheels are designed in America. The definition of off-road. Remington. Wheels for the true outdoorsman. I've known Joey for quite a while now and he's quite the character and has a crazy personality. He's also been known to turn a really uneventful day of hunting into a really good time. We're heading back towards town to get a quick bite to eat, use the restroom facilities and uh, decide what we're going to do. And of course we got a train here. You know what they say about a train. You don't want to be on the tracks when one's heading your way. That was... Revolution. That was, that was amazing. <laughs> Reassemble your rifle so quickly. Told me to drill sergeant. God, they took my horse. Have you got anything to trade? All I have is this piece of hard rock candy, but it ain't for eating. It's just for looking through. <laughs> what is I that? Used to know these things, being an Indian, but now I'm part of the civilized tribe, <laughs> and I'm easy to sneak up on. They dressed us up like Abram Lincoln. <laughs> we got to meet the. Secretary of the Interior, he congratulated us for being so civilized. He told us, endeavor to persevere. Is there any more to that? Yeah, but I can't remember it that good. 1375 is so awesome, though. Thank you kindly. Look at that frost. You know what they say about frost? What's that? You'll slip and fall on it. That was a pretty good joke there by Joey, because yesterday morning, I slipped and fell on some frost, and it hurt. So he's good at he's good at busting balls. He's a good ball buster, that guy. I got the scope on Ten Tower. Okay. For the uh, 220 yarder, and actually, I'm gonna dump these cartridges and have you do a few dry fires since you haven't like felt this trigger in a while. I'm going to drive fire. Okay. Do a bunch of drive fire. I love drive fire because it's cheap and easy. Yeah. Don't even worry about the shot. Just follow through. Yeah, that trigger point. That looked, good. that looked like a really good follow through to me. Now that we're all sighted in and Joey made us laugh, let's go get us a mule deer. Well folks, been a long year waiting for Henry. Let's get back out there and get this first day of hunting underway. Well, we hoped and prayed for a good start, but wouldn't you know, day one, right off the bat, the bad luck begins. Well, we walked out here to the spot, and what do we find? Public land? Some pheasant hunters down there. We walked in the creek bottom we were wanting to work. What are you going to do? We'll swim the circle back to the truck and work these coolie fingers, and uh, 
Let's see if we can't find one there. Yeah. See that snake deer and that brushy clue finger they're just coming up from. Oh look there's one. See? You're right. After covering a lot of ground in this bottom and spending quite a bit of time down there, we figured between us and those pheasant hunters, we'd probably already pushed all these deer out of there by now. Joey was telling us about this next spot and how it always has a lot of deer in it, and boy, he was not wrong. The buck that Joey saw was quite a ways down the coulee. Looked like we were going to have to make quite a long stalk to get to him. Buck was bedded down and he had no idea we were there. Crap, he busted us. There he goes, out of our lives forever. Well folks, the bad luck continues for Henry in Montana. On to the next spot, Joey! Almost immediately, not two minutes after we got out of the truck, Joey looks over onto some private property to the east of us and sees a really nice buck. And when I say this deer was nice, this deer was nice. Why is it that every deer I want to shoot either runs off or is on private land? It really is frustrating to get a look at a deer like that on day one and not be able to get a shot on him. As the daylight was quickly going away, I looked to the west and saw some bird activity down in the coulee. When we got down there, we realized that it was a doe deer carcass. It looked like either somebody had dumped or some coyotes had gotten to, and the birds were just having their way with it. Once we saw this deer carcass, we realized there's probably quite a few coyotes in the area and not many deer. So, time to get on in the truck and head on home, call it a day. Well, after a frustrating first day, here's your day one summary, brought to you by 3rd Century Conversions. Alright, so we come here to the state piece, it's a pretty nice east-west running coulee. It's kind of a, it's a real wide one, not super deep, but very brushy, snakes around, there's a little creek bottom in it. Normally good for a good sized herd of muley does with a few bucks in tow. Didn't see them, but we didn't walk the whole piece, but on the private just adjoining to it, we saw what looked like a nice little 3 by 4 mule buck limping along so it looked like he had an injured right leg but uh, once we come around to try to pick him up again we lost him so either went down a coolie thing or went up and over the hills and he gone another day without a dead deer in the truck take it easy it's just day one
Dude, look at the temperature outside. Negative 15. Are you kidding me? Aw, uh, come on. Stop being such a wuss. Today, Joey had to do some things in town, so Mike and I decided to go off and do it on our own. Joey gave us his GPS and a few good spots to try. One of those spots is where Henry missed this big old boy last year. Not that Henry's not frustrated enough already, but I do know one thing, he hates watching this clip over and over again. Okay, do we have to rub it in? And it's the same spot I killed this big boy two years ago. All right, all right, let's get out of the truck and start hunting. This spot always seems to have deer in it, so naturally, as soon as we get there, Henry looks down and sees a group of does. What's that coming down the road? Yep, that's a cattle truck ruining the day. At this point, we seriously wondered if we would ever catch a break. This next spot is the one spot that I wanted to go back to for an entire year. The reason? This guy. Last year, Henry never got a shot at this deer. In fact, this is the only footage we have of this deer. He stayed behind the thick brush the entire time, and after coming out here for the last few years, this is by far the biggest mule I've ever seen in person. Don't you walk away from me. Hold up. On any other hunting show, this would be that point in time where Henry kills that buck he's been dreaming about, right? Not up in here! Ain't nothing but beef up in here today! Yeah, those are cows. Those are cows, dude. Yeah, it's all cows. Henry's frustration level is about a 9.8 right now, but we got to keep on going. This next spot, I spotted a big buck down at the river bottom, about 150 yards away. When we first got the camera on this deer, we weren't really sure if he was a shooter or not. And then I asked Henry if I could take a look at him through his binoculars. You know what, dude? He ain't bad. Joey would shoot this buck in a second. He's right. My buck standards aren't very high. You know what? He's, be he's better the more I look at him. So after watching him for about five minutes, I decided to set up for a shot. But before I could even get set up, this happens. The dude just gets up and walks away. Unbelievable. This is getting really frustrating. There's another big coulee coming up, we should keep going. It's really cold. We're in here. Might as well do it.
this last location we hunted here on day two was a big coulee. We'd never really been to this spot before. And we, uh, we glassed quite a bit, walked all the edges of it, seen basically the whole thing, and Henry spotted a decent sized group of does. No bucks. We watched these deer for about an hour, and as you can see, they were quite a ways away. A coyote ended up bumping them out of there a little later in the hunt, and that inspired us to do our next segment, If Deer Could Talk. Roll the intro. What would they say if deer could talk? I'm just going to cross this street nice and slow. These cars will wait on me. Betty, Betty, did did you did you just hear that noise? Oh, oh, I did, Sheila. What was that? I don't know, but we better be fixing to get up out of here. These coyotes have been crazy in here lately. Uh, yeah, I plan on living, so I'm gonna leave. Girl, you ain't lying. Hey, y'all, wait on us. Don't leave us down here. Just imagine if deer could actually talk. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize for the last 30 to 45 seconds of your life that you will never get back. What's up, man? What's up, yo? So this is one of Joey's hunting buddies, Tom. He just informed us that he has the day off tomorrow and he'd like us to try out a new spot with him in the morning. Too much. How you been? So how's the hunting been? Kind of slow. Yeah. Seeing a lot of deer, but you know, a lot of small bucks. No well, I was just yet. up north uh, yesterday and saw a pretty good group of them. Maybe we should go up there and try that out. No problems with that. All right. At this point, might as well bring in Rick, Jim, Bob, Tony, whoever you want. We need all the help we can get. Yes, Joey, I got it. Can we keep hunting, please? This little four-point buck knew we were up to something. He followed us for at least a mile. All right, so this morning we seen some bucks. Just come and tease. 
They're gonna be up at the north end. We're gonna head south. Give them a little more time to get down deeper into the coulee. If we don't see anything on the south end, we're gonna head back up north. And there's a big red willow thicket up there that they bed in. And I got an idea if we don't bump into them beforehand, we'll find them in that thicket. There's literally never a dull moment when you're hunting with Joey. It's <laughs> freaking cool. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude. That is freaking cool. <laughs> Holy shit. Down he went, too. That's going to be number 32 off these sticks. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. Just put another notch in the shooting sticks. Yep. Henry gets his mark. First mule deer, man. This is freaking awesome. First Montana muley right there. Hiking, I don't know how many miles. It's awesome. Yeah, how long was the hike today? What do y'all think? Well, I don't know what time it is. We did at least five miles, right? It's 10.04, so 
Yeah, we've been going for... This is what it's all about. Second time to Montana. First big mule deer. First episode of Remington Wheels Outdoors. Total 50, 60 miles we put out here. Yeah. Two trips. Redemption. It feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> it feels really good. He's a good deer, man. He's a great first deer. Big body. We'll get a lot of meat off him. He's awesome. It was, it was all that walking, man. <laughs> Whew. I was a little worried this morning. I was too. And all of a sudden, boom, there it was. Good spot. This 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 country is awesome up here. It really is. What do you think? You, you jacked or what? Way jacked. Thanks to Joey for the hospitality and the and and, and the Thanks, uh, bro. unbelievable knowledge. Tom Coach came out here today to help us. He's back at the truck right now. We have seen a lot of wildlife though. It's amazing how many deer we've seen on this trip, mainly because it's been so cold. But man, awesome. And not to mention today's like the, the warmer day of, yeah. of the three yeah. or four we've already been here. It's, yeah, been, it's only 15. Yeah, it's only 15 <laughs> degrees. 15 above zero, huh? Yeah. So, Yesterday we were in the negatives, like negative double digits. It was crazy. Yeah, yesterday yeah. was pretty wild. Was but pretty today wild. it felt better and it was definitely worth it. <laughs> He's <laughs> nice, perfect. man. He is nice. Words can't describe how happy I am that we finally got it done. It's been a long journey. It's been a lot of fun doing it. It's aggravating, frustrating, but when you finally accomplish it, it really means something. And I just cannot wait to get back to the house, gut this thing, dress it, put it on the grill, and have a good time with my buddies. It was, a, it was an awesome experience. Little toast. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank me, sir. Thank you, sir. Great week. Awesome week. It's a little cold, but hey, got it done. And check this out. A little cold. Very cold. Oh, Look at these. They can wrap back straps. Well, man, after two years of pain and frustration, I'm glad you got it done. Me too, Mike. It's been an insane couple years. It sure wasn't easy. Looks like persistence paid off. Sure did. I'm really happy to be a part of it, man. Congratulations. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. This has truly been a journey. Hunting mule deer set us on this journey. Our friends and fellow hunters helped us succeed on this journey. Our love and respect for the outdoors kept us humble on this journey. Along the way, we've learned a lot. We've seen some pretty amazing things. We've enjoyed the company of some really amazing people. And we had an unbelievably rewarding feeling as we watched Henry harvest his first Montana mule deer. The western states of this country are a beautiful sight to see. Whether you marvel at God's wonderful creations, enjoy walking the streets of legendary western towns, or you admire the breathtaking scenery that presents itself in every direction or through every twist and turn. Whether it's the never-ending abundance of wildlife or the historic landmarks that can only be seen in this great country. It's what makes the West a part of this great nation that every American should experience at least once. The most wonderful part of this two-year journey we've been on are the memories that we've made. America, we thank you for truly being beautiful.